What's up, live check in? If this is your first time watching this video after the live stream is over, we always start with a slight delay because YouTube is not necessarily instantaneous in notifying people that you are live. So, a lot of people already know that, but for the sake of the new people, I always give YouTube a second, let people know that I'm live. Let me plug up this to the charger. Make sure we got enough juice to talk about what it is that I want to talk about today. When you tune in, you guys, hit that like button. We're going to do three live streams today. So uh, a lot of people were talking about the independent career service earlier. So I decided to uh, touch on it um, right now in this live stream. Uh, and then I'll come back again with Mike uh, and we'll do that last video. So um, when you get in, as always. Tell me where you're watching this from. Hit that like button or that thumbs up button. Uh, if you don't mind, it does help the channel. So what I want to talk to you about, and um, I write notes down for everything, is um, signs that your independent courier service will probably fail. I want to tell you guys that um, just like in any other business, it's not guaranteed that everybody that starts off as an independent courier will be in this business 10, 15, 20 years, even three years from now, right? Um, but I do understand that some people uh, want to get into this business long term. So this video is for that audience. So if you're here and you're interested in kind of knowing some telltale signs that I've seen uh, over the years of what is kind of uniform across the board, that if this starts to happen shortly thereafter, I saw people to, uh, to lose their independent career service um, in both good and bad ways. Uh, some people just lost the contract. Other people, they just got to the point where they felt like, you know, they didn't want to do this anymore. So they moved on. So uh, I think enough people is here now. Let's get started. First thing that I want to uh, touch on is the first telltale sign that your independent courier service will probably fail is you're not willing to invest in proper resources for your success, such as good workers, proper vehicles, necessary marketing. Uh, you're too scared to lose money. Um, and I think lots of times, uh, being scared to lose money comes from a lack of knowledge, okay? If you uh, fully understand what you're getting yourself into, then are there necessary risks that you have to take? Absolutely. That's true in any business across the board. But um, if you educate yourself, then you'll be fairly competent in saying, okay, I know this is a risk that I'm taking by buying this truck, but I understand this business. I know how this goes. And I feel like I will get a return on investment. So I feel like... Uh, lots of times people are scared to invest in themselves and in their business because they're afraid to lose money. I want you guys to understand that there is no business that does not lose money. And what I mean by that is that your business can overall be profitable, but I, that doesn't mean that dollar for dollar, every time you spend a dollar in marketing that brought you in a new customer. So you could have tried some marketing, it did horribly wrong, but then you made up for it doing something else in another part of your business, right? So I kind of want to put that out there to let you know that if you educate yourself and you know what you're getting into, don't be afraid to lose some money. Just because you lose a little money doesn't mean that your entire business is going to be not profitable by the end of the year, okay? Especially when it comes to marketing. Um, and maybe you don't, uh, recoup your entire investment the first year. So just understand that as well. Like just have a realistic expectation and don't be afraid to invest in yourself because if you don't invest in yourself, nobody else will. Um, moving on, I wanted to touch on, uh, oh, well, one last thing too, when it comes to uh, every business losing money in some form or another. Um, also, you got to understand what an opportunity cost is. So you could be losing money by the decisions that you chose not to make as well. So that's what I mean. Um, I want to add to that as well. So you guys got to understand that um, you got to put money in. I have lost money in the independent courier service, but that doesn't mean that overall it wasn't profitable for me, okay? There's going to be a learning curve. Hopefully I facilitate with making that curve uh, easy for you guys to manage. Uh, through the content that I produce, but there is going to be some things that you're going to learn in trial by fire, um, as I call it. Also, if you guys have any questions, put it in the chat. We'll touch on it briefly, and um, 
you know, I'll go ahead and get out of here. Uh, second thing that I want to touch on that might be a telltale sign that you guys may want to keep your eyes on other than you being afraid to invest in the proper equipment. So, in a that's not saying that all I have right now is a minivan. So I'm going to start with my minivan. You can start with what you have, depending on what's available in your area. Understand that that minivan, that, that car does not make the same as a 26 foot box truck with a lift gate. So if you want to start with that, have a realistic expectation. If you want to do it part time, have a realistic expectation. You put part time time in, you're going to get part time money. OK, so don't expect to do this for one hour a day and wonder why you don't make a thousand dollars a week. Um, moving on, you're impatient and unrealistic. You don't understand it's a grind. So I feel like a lot of people um, get into this business because you see the ads that they posted or you watch my channel, you watch other people's channel. You just know people in real life that um that say, OK, I, I got a contract with FedEx. I got a contract with whoever. And, um, and I'm making a killing every week. So you think that you're going to start off today and make the same thing that that person makes or even make the same thing that you make at your job. Um, I, I like to explain entrepreneurship. And it's kind of like when you go from middle school to high school, where in middle school, you probably could have been the smartest kid in your class and felt like you was a genius. And then you go to high school and realize you don't know as much as you thought you knew. So it's going to be a learning curve there. And consequently, you may not be the smartest kid in the school anymore. Same thing with entrepreneurship. You could have been the best person on your job. But then once you become an entrepreneur, maybe you're not the greatest entrepreneur. You got to learn some stuff and it's going to take you some time to build up and get to the bottom line that you're trying to reach. Um, I'll share a quick example with you guys. Um, I remember one of the bad experiences, but overall uh, it, it, it comes with the territory I remember me and my guys worked 11 days straight, no days off, 14 hours a day, every day, talking about Saturday and Sunday too, 14 hours a day, 11 days straight. And when I did the profitability, I only made $800. This was after me paying my guys. This is after me fueling the truck, everything that goes into that. That's why I always preach, do your numbers. So before you just take on a route, do your numbers. Are you going to make anything off of that? I thought I was going to make $3,000 because I was new and the route said can make $3,000. So I said, yeah, I want to do that route. Not understanding that, okay, you got to pay some guys. I had two guys that was running with me for the, uh, the whole 11 days. I had to pay those guys and I had to pay them fairly because if you work 11 days straight, 14 hours a day, uh, you expect to get compensated for that. So I had to do right by my guys. I had to fuel the trucks. And it was a lot of stuff that went into that. And that's why I'm trying to tell you guys, hopefully you learn from my mistakes and you take some of the content that I put out in these videos and you don't go through the same thing that I went through and run your numbers and uh, realize that you got to be patient. You got to be realistic. Um, so moving on. Uh, another thing that I see a lot of people uh, try to do in this business and it doesn't work. You become either consciously or subconsciously, you become somebody that thinks that being an independent courier is a flip. So I'm going to go to Craigslist. I'm going to get a van for $500. I'm going to find a route that pays $2,000 a week and I'm going to make my money back in the first week. Well, once you get into it, you find out that if you do find a van for five hundred dollars, it's breaking down on you all the time. You might put two to three thousand dollars in it just to make it a reliable van. Then you go looking for routes. You have a hard time finding a route that's going to pay two thousand dollars a week. Because I tell everybody that the most that I know somebody make without expanding their service is seventy five thousand dollars a year. So if you're trying to hit the six figure mark, you're going to need at least. A cargo van and a box truck in my experience. So, but if you're lucky enough to find that route wherever you are, then you got to do your numbers and realize that, okay, this is not a quick flip. I got to pay insurance. I got to pay fuel. I'm going to need an oil change eventually. I'm going to need a set of tires eventually. I'm going to need some brakes. You know what I mean? Things of that nature. They're going to take out some fees because I'm using their scanner. I'm on their cargo insurance. So uh, if you're going to become an independent courier, and it's going to be a short-term flip. Do I know people that do it? 
Yes. Um, that is not the mentality. If you think you're going to make a lot of money real quick and get out of the business, like you're not going to make a quick a hundred thousand dollars and get out of the business. Uh, and I'm gonna say most cases. I don't know anybody that's done it, but uh, just to be fair, I'm gonna say in most cases. That is not how this works. If you want to build up your independent courier service, it might take a year, two years, three years. It really just depends on your hustle. When are you willing to invest in more equipment, invest in more drivers, seek new opportunities? So you really grow uh, depending on your hustle. So I just share the hustle with you guys, but it's really up to you to decide when are you going to take action. Next thing I want to touch on is that uh, and this will be the final thing. So if you got any questions, we'll get to that next. People become complacent and stop trying to become incrementally better in their business to provide a good service for their customer, seek new clients, hire better employees, invest in newer uh, equipment that can open up new doors for them. And this is not always a bad thing. I know somebody who started off small as an independent courier, learned the game scaled themselves up, got in the air freight, sold their air freight company, made a ton of money and was out. So, um, you know, every now and then they got a sprinter. Every now and then they'll cover a route, make a little 1400 a week here and there. But um, but they're set. So uh, but again, this also is not to be mistaken for what we talked about earlier. This person did this over the course of 15, 20 years. So he didn't get in and out in his first year. He found out about air freight and built the air freight company. And in the second year, somebody bought it. So he still was patient and realistic, but he did get to a point where he became complacent. He stopped looking for new clients and, you know, he was just happy with the money he was making. Somebody came along and bought him out. That's the best way to get out of the business. If you had to get forced out or uh, fell out of this business. What happens more times than that is that you'll get complacent when the contract is up, somebody will offer a greater service than you and you might lose that contract. Um, so that is what happens more times than, oh, you get lucky and one of your customers wants to buy you out. So be realistic about that as well. So if you wanna do this long time, a long term, excuse me, um, incrementally, even though you got a good paying route right now, always look for routes. I maintain a list. This is not my office, but I maintain a list to the side in my office where you guys don't see it uh, by my desktop computer of just different companies. And even though we're good right now, uh, every now and then, if it's just once a week or whatever, just search in your area. What's what's available? And you never know um, when you might you know find a route that you really want. So Save your money as you begin to scale your business um, and then always look for routes uh, and, you know, and try to find competent people. If not, I always recommend staffing agencies, temp agencies uh, may be able to work with you depending on your situation. Um, but always be looking for the next route. Uh, how can you provide a greater value for your, for your existing customers? So once this contract is up, whether it's this year or five years from now, I don't even want them to look at nobody else. I want you to be so happy with JT Hustles that if you got to put it out on a job board or wherever you got to put it out uh, because of whatever company policies uh, you have to follow, I want that just to be a formality. I want people to be like, yo, we had this guy for this long. He didn't give us no trouble. This is who we rocking with. We not trying to, to take a shot on Joe Schmo, some new person who says they can do X, Y, Z. We already know what this guy going to do, and we happy with rocking with him. So that way you retain your current business, and you always looking for new business uh, to continue to scale your business. Um, so that is a short version of my spiel there. Any questions you guys have? Um, and again, I, I decided just to make this video real quick because a lot of people earlier was asking questions about being an independent courier. And I said, I, I will just go live now and address that. And I also want to tell you guys, because uh, I don't want you to think that everybody that gets into this business stays in it for 40 years, 10 years, 20 years. And that may not even be your goal. You might say, I want to start an independent courier service, grow it, and then try to find somebody to buy it from me or make enough money to invest in real estate. I know somebody right now who they let it be known. 
I'm growing my independent courier service and then I'm going to save up a certain amount of money and I'm going to invest in real estate and just let this go. So whatever your business model is, it doesn't matter. But I just want you to understand and have a plan no matter what it is so that when you're ready to transition out of this business, you can transition out of it. But if you want to do this long term, you also are aware of that uh, as well. Shout out everybody here. Milkman Trucker, Luis Aquila, Critter Main 21. Good afternoon. Tony Miles, Nikki Rose, Connecticut in the building, point to point transportation out of North Carolina, Columbia, Maryland in the house. Shout out to Crystal. Great topic. Hello, hello. I saw one of the videos on Independent Courier months ago and forgot your name to log on to. Glad to find you. Bless, bless you. Thank you. No problem. Glad you made it back. What's up? What's up? Atlanta in the house. Can I rent a van or truck? I always tell people the companies, the companies usually don't care. Um, and I'll say if you're getting a small contract, they usually uh, don't care. Do they feel better about hiring a man or woman who owns their equipment? Yes. Um, because if you rent a piece of equipment, they don't really know when you're going to stop renting. OK, so it, to them, you know, a, as far as first impressions go, it will give them a warm and fuzzy if you own your own equipment. But if you were to approach them and say, hey, I'm very interested in getting into this business, um, I'm willing to invest in the proper equipment, but I'm going to start off renting a truck. Do you mind? And um, I've known people to do that with every company I ever contracted with. Wasn't a big issue. But I will tell you, though, also from talking to the people and having relationships with people that are on the other side of the table that decide whether or not to contract new independent couriers, uh, they will let it be known that, you know, if it's a lot of people and they have the option of pick whoever they want, they, they do have a better feeling about somebody who has already invested in that equipment and not somebody that has a rental uh, van or truck and they don't know when it's going back. Um, outside of that, I would say you got to run your numbers as well. So after you pay for your rental fees um, and you pay for your fuel, uh, are you going to drive it or, or are you going to pay a driver? Is this company going to charge you any scanner fees or insurance like that? So once you go through that whole breakdown and you get your total, if you're happy with that, then I don't see any reason um, why you can't uh, you know, rent a piece of equipment as long as you're happy with the profit at the end of the day. Let me see. Next question was. Good afternoon from Catonsville, Maryland. Shout out Catonsville, Mr. Truth Williams, job 5710. I have a truck. Can I start with that? I always tell people that it's a good possibility that you can start with whatever you have, depending on what area you in. Like, again, I don't know what area you in. And I don't know off the top of my head what opportunities are there, um, but there are companies out there um, that let you run with the pickup truck. And again, just because you can start with that, I'm not saying that you can make six figures with that. I don't want anybody to feel like I'm trying to mislead you and say you can go get a, a, a small truck and expect to make, you know, $100,000 a year. That ain't this video. We'll, we'll make another video about six figures uh, here soon. But. You can start just depending on the uh, what's available in your area. What's good, JT? Thanks for teaching us the small details of this industry. No problem, you guys. Also, just for the record, if nobody knows, um, because I get this all the time, people be like, I'm not going to buy your book. I'm not going to do consoles. I'm just Google it. Um, feel free to Google it uh, all you want. Uh, that is, I'm not trying to replace doing research. I actually encourage people to do due diligence. I'm going to tell you that in my experience, I have found that there is information out there for you to do the business, but there is not a lot of information out there telling you how to do the business in the best interest of you. So you might Google it and they say, buy a truck, find a route, start being a courier. It's going to be something real vague like that. And, you know, essentially they're not lying to you, but um, I'm trying to come tell you from experience of doing it for four years getting to the point now where I was blessed to have somebody that was willing to partner with me and take on, you know, the lion's share of the responsibility so I could even make these videos. So um, I just try to do a service to you guys and let you know uh, what do we do and what do other people the, that I know have done to protect themselves? Because I feel like everybody that becomes an independent courier 
uh, may not know somebody that, that has made half a million dollars or more with their independent courier service, sold it. And then, you know, now they just do, you know, go fishing, go hunting, just do weird old man stuff now. So um, knowing that everybody's not exposed to that, I just hopefully want to just put it out there and you guys will decide uh, what you want to take from me and whatnot. Would you buy a 26 box truck to start or a smaller box truck? Me personally, I like to stay with equipment under 10,000 pounds because um, as you guys can see, I don't just do the courier stuff. Um, so I do the courier stuff. I sell stuff online with eBay and Amazon, have my own private label business going on. Uh, Mike is my mentor. He's teaching me other uh, businesses to start. And we're going to probably do some collaborative stuff uh, here in the future. I started a fish breeding business with somebody where we're selling, you know, semi exotic fish. Uh, that we're going to breed and sell for $250 a piece or more. So um, I do a lot of stuff. So uh, I say all of that because um, anything I can do in a business to mitigate the headaches, I'm going to choose that route. Um, will you make more money than me if you buy just 26 foot box trucks? Absolutely. I'm fairly confident to say that, that, uh, you know, if you get a bigger truck, you can make more money. And, um, and DOT is not like, uh, the devil or anybody or any uh, thing like that. But I will tell you, though, is that it, it does add uh, another layer of complexity to your transportation company. Uh, once you cross over that and you got to deal with stopping at way stations. Uh, does this driver have a DOT physical? Uh, do they need a CDL for whatever you buy for them to drive? Um, or are they still good with their regular driver's license? Uh, what about the electronic log book and on and on. Um, I don't want to go too deep into that. But um, personally, I stick to smaller box trucks. If you're brand new and you haven't done anything with this business, I would recommend that you start off with a cargo van because a cargo van is cheaper to fix than a box truck. Every time my box truck broke down, um, well, even still, but I'm in the beginning, uh, it was a thousand dollars or more. Um, when my van broke down, it, some stuff I could fix myself, even if I had to go to the shop, maybe a couple hundred bucks. So, um, early on, I recommend if you can start with a cargo van to learn the business and see if this is something you want to do long term, I would say that. But if you're a very ambitious person and you don't mind, you know, dealing with whatever comes with it, you just want to try to make the most money, then hey, get the biggest truck you can, most reliable truck you can. And, you know, and just get your hustle on. It's, it's going to be a hustle regardless. Everybody hit the like button. Thank you for that, Nicole Noel. So, yes, please, if you're if you're here, all 48, 48 of y'all, please hit that like button. I appreciate y'all being here. If you have any questions about the courier industry at all, uh, this is the live chat to ask it. And I'll try to get to every unanswered question. Uh, engineering cannabis, continuous improvement in any industry. Absolutely. Absolutely. If anybody wants to start um, a, a cannabis based business, whether it's with hemp or cannabis or anything like that, um, engineering cannabis. I had him on the channel a couple of times. We'll probably have him on the channel again in the future. But um, his YouTube channel will teach you um, about that. And he talks about everything from uh, the courier side of the cannabis industry to growing it to everything, pretty much. So engineering cannabis. Um, I appreciate you being in this chat and for everybody that's watching, uh, that's what he's talking about. If you have any interest in the cannabis uh, business, uh, never taught about a staff and service help. We'll into it. Thank you so much. All right. No problem. So, yeah. So um, now, again, the staffing service is just something that I developed and I'll tell you guys why um, I've over the years, I've hired everybody from family and friends to total strangers to people from a, a staffing agency, which is kind of like, you know, a total stranger. But I mean, a total stranger, just somebody that was like, I heard you do this. I need a job. And at that time I needed them. So I put them on. And I would say that um, everybody's going to have problems. You know, you're going to have to be flexible and work with everybody. But um, in the beginning, if I could redo it, uh, I would start off with people uh, from a staffing agency just in my experience, because family members and friends, uh, no matter how much money you pay them, they think you're getting over on them. Uh, when it comes to a total stranger, 
while most businesses, that's how they do, you know, you put an ad out, you interview them, you try to make the best decision you can. Um, if I'm brand new and this is one of my first businesses, just to give me a warm and fuzzy, I would try to go uh, through a temp agency or a staffing agency because if somebody um, take you for an example or or me, uh, people that have been through the interview process a few times, you kind of know what to say to have a good interview. So they might say everything right. You give them the job and then three, four months down the line, you start having problems with them. And I hope that they don't do anything malicious to your equipment. But there has been experiences that I know of that for whatever reason, people might do something malicious to your equipment because they feel like uh, you making this much money, but the route pay this much money. That's something that's happened uh, very commonly. That's why I tell people now to once you have that subcontractor, put all the cards on the table up front, let them know this is what it is. Um, because I, I've done it where I'm like, yo, I'll pay you. And it, again, it don't matter how much you're going to pay them. I'll pay you $1,600 a week. I need you to go uh, from Charleston, South Carolina to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina every day. Will you do it? Yes. Three months later, I heard the route paid three times that much. I'm doing all the work. Um, I'm going to quit working for you if, unless you give me half or whatever, whatever. Stu uh, not, not, I don't want to say stupid stuff like that, but unusual stuff like that will happen uh, when you're a new uh, employer. So I would say with a, with a staffing agency, um, I don't know exactly why, but I feel like those type of people I haven't had as many problems with, uh, in comparison to everybody else. Um, now, uh, we don't do a lot of stuff with staffing agencies. We have a team of people that, you know, we have years together, we have trust and, uh, we rock out together in a mutually beneficial way. But if you're brand new, if you could start off with a staffing agency, do that. If you can start off with people you trust, start off with people you trust. Next question, uh, Carl Henderson. Thanks. No problem. Nicole Noel, excellent content. Thanks, JTLs, for a great work ethic. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. New Jersey in the house. Nancy Grace. Grice. Sherry Baker. Hello, JT. Hello, Sherry. Tony Miles, great spill, my guy. will be tuning in more. Absolutely. If anybody has any questions about the courier business, if you're just now checking in, uh, hit the like button. Tell me where you're watching this from. Ask your questions. Uh, I just want to, um, I in the beginning of this video, you can replay it if you want to. I went through some of the common uh, telltale signs that your independent courier service may fail. But I'm just going to wrap it up here with um, just touching on questions. Uh, Carol Simmons, yes, Carl Henderson, carry out of Baltimore. Would love to team up with somebody who's trying to come up. So uh, if anybody is in the DMV area, Carl Henderson is in the track is in the chat right now out of Baltimore. You would love to team up with somebody who's trying to come up. So um, you know, that's that's the beauty of this chat, man. You might can build a relationship with somebody in your area and uh and start doing business right there. So uh Jeff. Thank you for giving me the courage to go out on my own in the process of landing my first contract. I'll keep you posted. Definitely. Definitely keep me posted. Kelvin. Uh, the route you and Dallas Richardson were talking about, was that with a box truck or a cargo van for $2,000? It was, it would definitely be with a, with a truck. Um, that route was definitely for a truck, not a cargo van. Um, Matthew Perry, Yamin Bull, Tony Miles, Fax. Um, let me see what else. Awesome advice. Thanks for the motivation. Thinking about purchasing your book. Uh, where can I purchase the book? The book is available through Amazon. If you go to amazon.com and type in JT hustles. Also, uh, uh, the link to it will be in the description. After all of my, uh, live streams, I update the description. So it'll have that in the description of after this live stream, or you could just go to amazon.com type in JT hustles and uh, the book will come up. Uh, Mumbly Joe, I want to sell my truck. I'm taking offers. We start at five grand. Uh, Mumbly Joe, man, if you're going to come here to make a sale, man, you got to come correct. Where are you at? What kind of truck it is? We need to see pictures of the truck, man. Just, you can't just jump in the chat and just try to get somebody to buy a truck blind. Where you at? What truck? How many miles is on it? Let us know. Tony Miles said I'll be reaching out. 
Uh, Ancy Grice, I appreciate your videos. Thank you, thank you. Hey, I'm finally up and running and loving it. Um, shout out Manny MVP, up and running. Um, dog, hello. Hello, keep working. In Houston, Houston in the building, Virginia in the building. Are there some criteria you look for when picking staff any companies to do business with? Um, honestly, I just go in and talk to them. Like, I haven't came up with um with like an actual blueprint. I go in there and I tell them what kind of business I have and what kind of person uh I think would do good for what I need them to do. And um, and then I talk to them. And uh they might say, Well, these are the agreements that we have with employers, and then you decide whether or not that, that makes sense for your business or not. So um I just go in, tell them what my business is, who I'm looking for, can y'all help me? If so. Uh, just negotiate from there. Uh, what exactly are they looking for in order to uh, facilitate that for you? New Orleans in the building. Jason Jones, North Carolina. Good stuff. Definitely be tuning in again. Cool, cool. Blood, sweat, and gears. Motorsports. JT about to get it popping in St. Louis. I've been to St. Louis one time. When I had my last job, they sent me out to St. Louis for some training. Like, Four, four or five years ago, four years ago. With the courier biz, with the cargo van. Thanks for the info. I'm buying the book, by the way. Peace, bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, I've been to St. Louis one time. It was dope. It was a uh, everybody there loves baseball. Well, when I went, everybody there loved baseball. DJ Suitman. Yeah, man. I'm in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Hit me. If you're interested in rental property investing. I'm a handyman on my own business. Home and be more 10 to 12K free and clear. JT Hustles or anyone else. So if you're in the Upper Marlboro or Maryland, period, or um, you need a handyman, uh, you know what I mean? Reach out, DJ Suitman. Uh, yeah, man, I like when the chat goes like this. So, yeah, if you guys don't have any questions, you just want to network with one another, that's fine as well. Uh, but I'm just going to run through it and see if there are any questions. But uh, I'm going to just start jumping over the, the ones if y'all just want to network, check out the chat. Um. Can a 240 cubic square foot ton cargo weight do two G's per week? It, you have to see what route is available in your area. Like, yeah, it can. If you have a box truck, it can do $2,000 a week. But I'm saying, um, I always tell you guys, I don't make the route. It's not like I'm going behind this computer and making a route and then offering you guys to do it. Um, so, yeah, you can make that much money. You have to research in your area. Uh, what's available and what are the requirements. And what I tell anybody that wants to get into this business is um, before you do anything, find a route that makes sense. Um, and by makes sense, I mean uh, run your numbers. So just because, just like I used the board last time, just because the route says $1,000 a week, if after you subtract fees, fuel, insurance, maintenance, everything that it's going to take you uh, to actually do the route, uh, Besides sunk costs, I see it's so many crazy people say, well, what about food? Well, do you deduct food when you eat food at your job? No, nobody does that. The only people that deduct the cost of food from their business is if you have a restaurant. So like actually duck, deduct legit expenses and see if your uh, business is really profitable. And then if you're happy with that profitability number, then, uh, then do the route. But find a route, run your numbers, find a truck that you can afford, don't buy the truck yet. So we got a route, we want that route, we got this truck, we can afford that truck, we're not gonna spend a dime on that truck, we're gonna call this company, we're gonna talk to this company, we already know what they want because we saw the list. Uh, make sure that route is still available, uh, get to a point where after we go through, uh, they're going to you know vet us, we're gonna vet them, and then once we're ready to do that, uh, then they'll call you in and say, hey, can you come in, fill out the paperwork, bring your truck, Okay, cool. Now that I have that verbal uh, commitment, now I'm going to go buy this truck and I'm going to show up. The reason why I do it that way is because I don't want to buy this truck. And then I call you and then you tell me, hey, somebody just left here and we gave them that route. Now we have a route that pays half as much. And now I'm mad because I spent $18,000 on, on a truck and, um, and it's not going to make what I thought it was going to make. So uh, that is how I recommend a lot of people uh, to, to start this business. 
Um, and, and regardless of how much money you have. So even if you have $100,000 to invest in starting this business or you got $5,000, I just feel like that's the safest way to get into it. Um, I personally don't like to buy something and then it takes me forever before I start making any of my money back. But I do understand that it is a patience game, like I said earlier. But anything that I can do to try to facilitate that, you know, I, I will do that. And I will encourage you to do the same. Um, let me see what else, what else. Definitely interested in started again. Cool, cool. You guys, the book is on Amazon. You can type in JT Hustles. Another thing that I want to touch on too is um I'm doing consults. Uh I'm a little bit behind in my emails. I'm catching up on the emails. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you guys know that I, I do a lot of businesses. Um, it, you know, it's just something I enjoy doing. So the courier service, selling stuff online, um, whether it's eBay, Macari, or with my own website, the podcast, YouTube. Uh, so I've decided to uh, restructure how I'm going to do my consulting because I have a, a lot of business stuff going on. So um, I'm going to start doing sales on the consulting um, and you guys will understand why. Uh, anybody that wants to do a console, you click the link below. So um, I want you guys to know that uh, it's a supply and demand thing. Uh, a lot of people get mad and say, oh, I don't want to pay for this and it's going to take me forever to be able to afford a console. Well, you can either wait for the sale. The sales will be announced um, on my Instagram. I'm JT Hustles on Instagram. I'm JT Hustles on Facebook and I'll post it there. Um, you can wait for a sale. Or uh, you, you can, you know, what I mean, just buy the book. It's cheaper. But um, I'm sure everybody here uh, understands how supply and demand works. So uh, the demand on my time is more than the amount of time that I have. So uh, I, I did have to restructure the consults, um, but I will be doing sales on it from time to time. But if you want to do one now, you can do one now. The link to it is still in the description below. Um, always giving good advice, family. Thanks again. Definitely gonna buy the ebook. Cool, cool. Appreciate your support. What's the name for medical transport? Um, RFPs are how they come out. It stands for requests for proposals. RFPs come out on um, like it's different job boards for them. I wish they would put it all in one place. But honestly, as of the time that I'm speaking on this, it's not one place where every pharmaceutical company drops all their RFPs. But uh, that's the name of it, though. RFPs. Um, and you go bid on a pharmaceutical contract. And once you find it, it'll tell you everything that they require. Um, and if you want a mail contract, even though nobody asked that yet, it's called a HCR, highway contract route. So if you want to do mail, it's a HCR. If you want to do uh, pharmaceuticals, it's a RFP. So you can Google it. You can talk to somebody that works at the place. You can do whatever you want to do. But uh, that's what you need to find in your area if you want to do that. Um, but they do pay net. And we talk about net a lot on here because that's how life goes once you get a big contract. So just know that you will be net something. Um, anyone in this looking at airplane part delivery? I was delivering car parts and was told this was very profitable. Greensboro, North Carolina in the building. Shout out North Carolina. Frugal Genius, great content, JT. Hey, you guys, check out my brother's YouTube channel, The Frugal Genius. He talks a lot about, um, like, saving money. He is really, like, the stuff that he taught me, I was able to save, like, two grand in, like, a month. Like, like he's really good when it comes to, like, money management and stuff. And, um, or if you're into motorcycles, can't know a lot about motorcycles. So, uh, Frugal Genius, he's the moderator. So, uh, he should be a different color than everybody else in the chat. Go check them out if you're into motorcycles or if you want to know, okay, now that I know how to make money from watching JT Hustles, how do I make this money last longer, uh, save the money, whatever it is you want to do. But appreciate you for being here, bro. Um, Mighty Mike 201, what about a cargo van from 1989 with less than 100 miles on it? Do you think $1,500 is a good deal? Well, if you're going to do um, any kind of mobile business with it, then uh, it's probably, well, you got to test drive it too. It can have less than 100,000 miles and, you know, and transmission be trash. But if everything checks out on it, it can do something. Like, it could be a mobile something business. Now, 
Will you find trouble getting a courier route? Maybe. I don't know where you are. So, so I was, let's just say yes, uh, just because I don't know where you are. But um, these companies want like reliable equipment. I will say that I've gotten a contract with a 1990 something van, but I went in in person and sold that person me and uh, and that van. So if you're willing to do that and you're willing to go and, you know, and put your name and reputation on the line and say, I, JT Hustles, guarantee that if given this route, it will be done. I know you see a 1990 something van, but no matter what, you know, I can make this happen. Just give me the shot. And, you know, and really stand on that, then maybe. But um, but even still, if, if, if you get a hard time getting courier routes, um, if it's a good running van, it's just old. Man, I got a partner down in South Carolina, got a mobile car wash business. I know a couple cats up in New York, mobile car wash business. Um, My boy Fresh got a couple barbershops and he got a mobile cell phone repair business before I even knew how to do cell phone repair. So you can do a mobile anything business with a good running van. Uh, moving on. FYI, to anybody looking for a van, I got mine from Craigslist. Just know how to pick out the junk from the gyms. Usually Kel Kelly Blue Book. If you don't know how to white glove a vehicle, find someone who does. So, yeah, you guys, I got my first van and my first box truck from Craigslist. I know we did a video at an auction where you can get stuff from there. But, you know, Craigslist, man, it's free. Go up there, find something you like. And, um, you know, if, if there's nothing on Craigslist in your area or any area you're willing to drive to, then maybe you got to find an auction or just find a, a car lot. But, man, Craigslist is how I started. So uh, but just like he said, you know, uh, you, you got to do your due diligence, regardless of where you're going to get it from. I don't care if you're going to get it from a dealer. Do your due diligence. I have a video on this channel that will give you some insight on uh, how to once over it. Also in my book, uh, for those of you that, that choose to invest in the book, it will give you a, a breakdown of how to once over the van and stuff that I check for um, before I purchase uh, any new equipment as well. Chicago in the house. What's happening, JT? What's up, Frederick Young Sr.? On one of your videos, you spoke on tax lien properties. How did your uncle get started? Um, he's an old school cat. So he reads the newspaper in the newspaper. They posted the tax lien auction, but it's 2019. So you can find out about it online now, which is what I do. So, um, but how my uncle got started, since that was the question, uh, he was reading the newspaper. He saw there was an auction coming up. Uh, you know, he worked 30 years in the Bronx, New York, retired, moved back to South Carolina so he could be rich, uh, with that New York retirement in the South, like a lot of people do. And went to the auction and pretty much learned on the fly. But basically, uh, how he taught me, uh, and, and I, I've i done it, but I've not been as successful as him because he's great at it. Um, you go to the auction, you bid on the property. If you win the bid, that individual, at least in the state of South Carolina, has a year to reclaim that property. Meaning that, for example, what I did, I would buy property for $600 at the tax lien auction. Um, they had a year to bring back that money, they had to pay me $600 plus like 18 to 20 something percent interest on my money at some point throughout that year. And if they did that, I get my money back with interest. They get to keep their property. If the whole year goes by, um, then I get the property. So uh, that's what my uncle does. He's retired now and uh, he goes to all auctions. He just, you know, old guy with money just go to auctions. But um, but he did teach me that. And this year I do plan on going there. Uh, both with and without them, because I'm going to go to a couple different ones, not just the ones that uh, that he goes to. And um, to be honest with you, lots of times they're at like like government buildings, like maybe the courthouse or something like that. And um, and I don't think they'll let me make a YouTube video inside of there, but uh, I'll record as much as possible. You guys know I'll try to record as much as possible for you. Georgia in the building. Definitely willing to make it happen. Thanks, brother. Also, you guys, if you have any questions about um, anything in the appliance repair school, um, the syllabus is out. And um, I'm going to run through it real quick here. But I just want you guys to know that the next video that we're going to be doing is going to be teaching you guys another business that you can start with a small investment. But also want to let you guys know that um, if you want to come to the event, what to expect and more information will be on this uh, later. But um, we're going to do a two-day event. 
You're going to learn how to diagnose and fix all of this stuff. So how to diagnose problems and fix dryers, washing machines, ranges, microwaves, dishwashers, cell phones to include iPhones and Androids, uh, refrigerators. You're going to learn how to find customers. Uh, if you want to do individual customers, I'm talking about, or if you want to contract with bigger businesses, how to find and get contracts and um, how to continue your education, how to scale up your business. So um, stay tuned to the next live stream. Appreciate everybody being here. That is what we're going to talk about as soon as Mike gets back um, doing what he has to do right now. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Please tune in to the next one. Peace.